Now, I want to move on and talk to um, Nicholas Walsh, former AFL and Cavern footballer Nicholas Walsh is with us. Nicholas is the Mental Health Programme Manager at the AFL Coaches Association and we're talking now about the Conor McKenna story this week in Australian football. Um, and the news just in about Conor McKenna is his fourth test has come back negative. Nicholas, good morning to you. How are you, boys? Um, this is this is changing by, by the minute over here and I've put the background as a an empty MCG because the last couple of weeks has been really airy watching it on TV. So just to give you a bit of a snapshot of what to come in, in the GA world as well, it's it's so, so different. And uh, obviously the, the whole Conor McKenna stuff over the last week has been uh, quite interesting in the media. Um, I'm not sure if your, your followers have been um, listening to it closely, but he returned from Ireland um, three to four weeks ago. Um, he was quarantined in the hotel, which are government rules here in Australia. Uh, he tested negative twice in, in that period of time. Uh, then he was obviously released. He was then tested uh, seven times in total, five within the club setting. On the fifth test, there was shown an irregularity, um, which then he was brought in for a secondary test on the Saturday morning after having full contact training with the group the, the day before. Um, he tested positive on that day. Since then, um, he's had another test subsequently today and it's just been reported that he has now tested negative again. So uh, this is moving like rapid pace here and it's, uh, it's quite interesting. I haven't got any AFL confirmation. I've got a number of tweets and different things coming through now on it, but um, it's, it's interesting. Um, the fact that Conor McKenna has been, you know, essentially could have been hung out to dry where he may have done, you know, nothing wrong at all. Well, talk to us about that because that it seems like there's been a feeding frenzy where he has become something of a lightning rod where it looked like people were waiting for an excuse to batter one of the AFL players and he was the, the first one across and has absolutely been the victim of some fairly horrific stuff. Yeah, like there's been so much like negative media around it as well. And um, there's a couple of reports uh, coming out of Sydney as well, a couple of radio stations that were even claiming he, like, he should never play again and he's brought down the competition and all this end, end of things. But, you know, I'm not sure how many people just paused to look after how actual Connor was going himself. You know, because obviously it would have been a very, very tough time for him. You know, n none of us would like to be diagnosed with the with, with COVID-19, um, you know, it'd be an absolutely, you know, gut-wrenching thing to be told you have, especially in the club setting, especially when he traveled overseas. Um, and then, you know, was thrown up that he broke the rules, which isn't proven yet. And all he has claimed is that he visited uh, an open for inspection, which is a bit murky in terms of the AFL protocols, um, and also visited his ex host family, which uh, in AFL rules, you're allowed to visit immediate family, but Connor is so close to that ex-host family that he initially stayed with when he came over with, they're like his second family from home. So um, yet they're not blood, but uh, saying that they're very, very close to him. So rules are murky, whether he stepped outside those rules or not are still yet to be determined. Uh, but now the test has come back as a false and there was it was speculated in the media today that it, it could return as a false positive, which essentially that's what's happened. So Tom Brown from 7 News Melbourne is reporting on Twitter that Conor McKenna's fourth test has come back negative. Um, working on implications, latest shortly, hashtag exclusive. So, um, and that was just tweeted about 10 minutes ago. Uh, so this yeah. is a fairly amazing story. And I, yeah. I can imagine how happy and relieved he must be because at one stage, this fixture this weekend was in some doubt, but over the last kind of 24 hours or so, they were like, no, 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 we're definitely going to, at least the fixture is going to go ahead. So the whole notion that the league was falling apart because one player tested positive, which seems fairly yeah, ludicrous correct. in itself, has now been yeah. debunked. Yeah, I think the AFL were pretty strong. Once um, Connor did test positive, you know, they then handed it over to the DHHS, which is the, you know, the HSE equivalent here. And essentially, they had to do all the contract tracing in relation to who Connor had been in contact. They looked at the footage of training, um, uh, you know, in detail. And they had a context session on, I believe, um, Thursday. And they had a light training session then on, on, on Friday before they were due to play the game on, on Sunday. And... Um, he had only 
been in contact from the footage with around eight players in total. But when they went back and revisited the, the footage, he'd only impact with only one player from that group of eight. Because with any contact training, the protocols in Australia is that you can only have a group of nine or eight or eight plus a coach, nine in total uh, in small contact groups. And this week they've even you know reinforced that uh, message to the professional clubs. They're allowed one collective training session a week and everything else has to be done in, in small groups of, of nine. Can we just tease out some of the um, the treatment of this? I want to show up some tweets for the, the last few days here. Um, so Catherine Murphy, who I think is an Irish reporter, um, yep. actually kind of getting to the bottom of this here and saying some of the reporting around Conor McKenna's positive COVID-19 test is so disappointing. He's actually a human being. No one plans to catch a virus and take down the AFL. For anyone actually concerned with his well-being, you'll be pleased to know he's doing okay considering. So that was, um, I think, on Saturday. Um, before yeah. that, and the reason that she felt the need to tweet this was like some of the other stuff has been um, fairly grim. So if we can roll on to the next tweet, uh, our cameraman have shot some close-up vision of McKenna training yesterday. Here he's McKenna, of course. I don't know what's normal for winter. Make your own assessment. He clears both nostrils of snot and looks like he is slightly spluttering. Pictures 6 p.m. at 7 News Melbourne. This is the same guy who's now reporting the exclusive yes. that yeah. he's actually not got coronavirus. Yeah, I mean, so Tom Brown is one of the the main um, AFL football reporters here in Melbourne, and you know if there's um whatever it is, he he report about it and, and tweet it, and you know he he does give you the scoop, he gives you the updates and and whatnot, but sometimes they're too extreme. You know we all know from playing sport and football and all that sort of stuff that we do clear our nostrils and we do spit because you know it is pretty warm and he's probably just getting back into training and all that sort of stuff and for the camera to hone in on that and it even reported that he fist pumped someone as well you know oh wow you know you can't do that in this day and age but yet they're still allowed to go out on the weekend and you know tackle 80 plus times in games and mm. be, go one-on-one -on -one and high five after kicking a goal and all this sort of stuff so there's some of the reporting has been really really disappointing and i think some really strong personnel in the media have come out and said look the well-being and the health and safety of connor is is most empowering. Don't worry if he does has broken rules or whatever, we'll deal with them in time. But just let's make sure he is safe and effective and that if he has been in contact with anyone else, that they're safe and effective as well. But if he's now testing a false positive, uh, then, you know, is there, is there many people that need to be uh, looking at that? Yeah, for sure. Um, have you been in, in contact with him? Like, is the community so small that you, you know Connor at all? Yeah, I know Connor pretty well. Just just a few few brief text messages, just checking in with him, making sure he's okay. Uh, he reassured me no symptoms whatsoever. Uh, he feels perfectly fine. A um, bit disappointed with the, you know, just being stuck on his own and isolating again after spending two weeks on his own in a hotel after coming back from Ireland. Um, and yeah, he's but he's he's in good spirits. He's in good spirits, and the Irish consulate here reached out to him as well, and um, they're very supportive of any Irish immigrant that are that's living in Australia as well. Okay, so look, the whole notion, and uh, people are waking up this morning to the back page of the papers, reading comments from former AFL players questioning about whether or not Connor's going to have an AFL future. That's all. Mm. That's all put to bed as soon as this negative test comes out. It's like, well, I mean, maybe he breached some rules. There might be some. Suspension. You'd expect a good barrister to be mm. able to wiggle his way around uh, the nuances of that too, and away he goes. Right at, at the end of this, it's like this is hopefully the ultimate storm in a teacup for him. Yeah, and, and potentially. And if you look at it, like there's been it's been reported like there's been thirteen thousand uh, tests. The AFL players have gone through thirteen thousand times. So there's um, eighteen teams in the competition with 40, 40 players under under squads. And essentially, they get tested three times a week. So it's rigorous testing that they go through. One has come back positive, and a couple of days after now, hopefully it's it's a uh, false positive. So there has been scares early in the season that some uh, players showed symptoms. They were tested and they were negative. So like uh, out of all the tests, and, and if you look at Australia as a country, it's been a really, really good turnaround in terms of flattening the curve here with the whole coronavirus and you know there's very little corona case at the moment the government have lifted restrictions in basically every state but victoria the one we're in because we've a small spike and when i talk about a small spike i'm talking about 11 and 12 and 17 per day on the back of potential protests that have happened over the last few weeks but there's no deaths 
uh, or very little decks, I should say. And um, I think Australia as a, as a country is in a, is a very good shape. But you're right, it is a bit of a storm in the teacup. And, you know, we just hope that the whole thing hasn't been a bit of a debacle, which it is looking. And we just hope that Connor can, you know, get out there and hopefully play maybe this weekend. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I mean, who knows? Like, perhaps they'll suspend him as some kind of reaction to the reaction in one way, which would be very unfair if it turns out he actually has never had this at all and it was just a complete yeah. mistake. Um, why was the response so vicious and so vitriolic or is that just how the media works there? Oh, I think it, it goes sort of both ways. It's one, how the media works. It's two, um, the fact that his name was released, which I was a bit surprised early days why was his name released, but then I was explained to me that they had to follow up with people that he'd been in contact with and it would have broke anyhow. Um, and also just the third thing around, you know, Connor sort of flagging that he wanted to go home and he was homesick and that sort of thing. So the media could have jumped on that fact as well, that, well, maybe he doesn't really want to be here type thing, you know, which in my mind is completely wrong, because if he didn't want to be here, he'd still be at Ireland and he wouldn't have returned. And in fairness to the club, Essen, they've been really supportive to Connor and Connor has been very open and transparent with the club because he has been homesick. He got a chance to go home in, in February to spend time with his family and friends. He's been help, helping train on the local GA team here before all this, just to get back into that Irish community as well. Um, then he came back. He played you know, a couple of scratch games and, and the first round, and then um, COVID-19 struck, and he went back home. So then he came back again. So for people saying that he doesn't want to be here, it's why would you, you know, keep coming back and forward if he didn't want to be? You know, so I think he definitely has a future here. He's a very, very talented player. Um, you know, he's in the top probably three or four players that have ever played the game from an Irish point of view here in Australia. Um, and he's a very exciting player to play. And I know the club are, are a see big future for him. All right, Nicholas, last question for you. The the actual league itself, has it been good? Has the standard been good? Are players kind of back to where they were before this all happens? It's It's been different. Um Playing in front of no crowds is a, is a major thing. Now, the TV have done great to put false sound and everything on it. So, and from a spectator's point of view, it's been okay. Um, the players obviously didn't get a, a lot of running time in terms of contact or training as a group and all that sort of stuff. So the first round or so was, was a bit fumbly. Short, uh, they've changed the rules around the length of time. So the quarters are shortened. Uh, just due to the impact of load, because there's still 20, oh no, sorry, there's still 15 weeks left uh, of a season. There's, they've shortened the season, shortened the quarters. Um, and But for the players themselves and speaking with some of them, you know, that 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 intensity of championship, like, you know, the Ulster Championship, Leinster Championship, you don't get that buzz of kicking a point or kicking a goal type thing. You know, you don't have that energy to feed off if you make a big tackle and you hear sort of the, not that you're listening out for, but you hear that crowd, you know, pushing on and that adrenaline push. That's just not there. And that's very evident on the TV. But in fairness, most of the players have adapted really, really well. There's been some very surprising results uh, come out of it. Um, some of the teams that were going really well last year and early uh, this year aren't going so well. So there's some clubs adapted to the off period really well and some others have a bit of catching up to do. Yeah, all right. Nicholas, great stuff. Perfect time with uh, joining you this morning. Thanks a million for filling us in on all that. No problem. Okay. It's, uh, Nicholas Walsh down in Australia giving us uh, some breaking news there, essentially, that um, uh, Conor McKenna was not uh, actually carrying COVID-19 when he was tested. So there's been a false positive uh, there. So it'll be very interesting to see exactly what happens and whether or not he faces a suspension. But you can... I'm sure breathe a sigh of relief from uh, his perspective at the moment.